Hey guys, MCU Collector here with another video in the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, Marvel 80 Years or Marvel um, 80th Anniversary. Here we have the Thor Ragnarok 2-pack of Scourge and Hela. So another Thor Ragnarok pack to add to the collection. Now this pack, um, I, I think a lot of people were kind of excited for because we get Scourge, so it's a new figure, um, and then we get Hela, but it's another Hela since we already got it in the um, the Gladiator Hulk Build-A-Figure wave. Um, but Hela has actually recently really skyrocketed on this, on the aftermarket. Um, so if you wanted to get one, you, you know, she was going upwards of like $70. Um, so here we have it released again in a two-pack for $50. Bucks, so, and you're getting Scourge, so it works out pretty well. She is jam-packed with accessories um, and along with Scourge. So this is just an absolutely amazing pack. Um, and just more that we can add to Thor Ragnarok. So pretty cool. This figure, this package is so much better than I ever really would have thought seeing it in hand. So I'm very excited. So you can see here in Thor uh, Ragnarok movie logo, Scourge with all his stuff, Hela with all her stuff. Awesome artwork. We see Hela on the side of the package. We see Scourge on the other side of the package. Here's a look at the back of the package and a couple of bios. Let's check them out. One thing I want to point out, and I think this is kind of funny, we get this picture of Scourge, and it's all blurry, like it's all super pixelated, and like they couldn't get a high quality picture of Scourge to put on the package. It just looks weird. But anyway, Scourge, an Asgardian warrior desperate to prove himself worthy, Scourge's survival instinct leads him to join Hela and become her executioner. Scourge must wrestle with desire for self-preservation in the face of Hela's violence against his home. Interesting, that's a pretty good bio. Now let's check out uh, the bio for Hela. It says, Marvel's Hela, the ambitious goddess of death. Hela returns to Asgard to claim her throne after the death of her father, Odin. To further her dark goals, she raises an army of fallen Asgardian warriors to fight for her as her berserkers. Aha, interesting. But this is the highlight of the pack. But man, that's a great one too. Let's open it up. All right, and here are the Scourge and Hella figures out of the package, and wow, these things are crazy good. All kinds of accessories as well. So, Scourge comes with Dez and Troy, because when you put them together, they destroy. Um, he also has a dish interchangeable hand, so actually out of the package is just kind of open holding hand so he can hold the axe. Now, I'm sure there's a name for this. I don't know what the actual name is from the comics, um, but he does come with the axe that Hella makes for him. Um, and then he comes with the interchangeable hands or the trigger finger hands so he can hold the guns. Now, the guns actually seem kind of thin and small, but I'll show those up close here pretty soon. Hela is jam-packed as well. She comes with the hand that holds Mjolnir just before she crushes it. So she does have that. So it's, that's why this you see this additional hand out of the package. She has the regular hand there. She comes with um, a little flame effect that should be for the eternal flame. But I'm trying to remember if that flame was green or not, or was it only green after she used it? I can't remember. I'll look that up. Um, and then she has three total interchangeable heads. Um, so out of the package, she actually has the one with the antlers. And then um, I switched out the head already. So three heads total. Interestingly enough, this figure does not come with her sword um, that uh, she used in the movie. But if you have the Hela from the Gladiator Hulk build a figure, then you would have the sword. Or actually two of them, I believe, it came with. So first, let's take a look at Scourge, because there's not as much to him. Hela is going to take some time, because I will be comparing her to the previous version. Let's do it. All right, here's a close-up look at Scourge the Executioner. And what an awesome figure this is. It's actually much better than I originally thought he was going to be. So first off, let's look at the head sculpt. Now, I really like the way the face came out. I think it really does look like Carl Urban. As you can see there, the digital face print came out looking good. He's got a couple of scars on his face there, kind of darker around the eyes, and he has some facial hair, and I like the way that looks. Now, I don't know if this is hair. I thought these were tattoos, but they're sculpted on. So maybe it's hair. I'm not sure what it was. I just thought they were tattoos, but it's sculpted on there to look like hair, and it's done um, pretty nice. It's a little off of the sculpt itself as far as the paint apps, but I think it looks pretty good. This figure uses 100% new body mold, so it's nice when we get something that's completely brand new, and this thing looks awesome. I really like the way this blue looks. It's like a metallic blue, and I think it came out looking really good. We get some burgundy in there. We get some dark gray or kind of almost like a bronze color in here on some of these areas. 
and it looks really good. Some silvers over the blue, even on the back of the figure, wow. Silvers along the gauntlet pieces that he has that he's wearing there, and then on the skirt piece too. Yeah, it just looks really, really good. Throughout, silver on the boots as well. Yeah, this thing, this thing came out great. It's got these shoulder pads here that can kind of adjust a little bit. Looks like you could kind of take them off. It's ported in there, but it's not coming off. Yeah, there it is. So it could be removed if you wanted to, but then he's got a giant hole in his chest and on his back. Interesting. That's oh, look at that. There's another. That's another little second piece there that could probably come off too. That's interesting. So he's multi-layered. I don't like the way it looks without. We're gonna put those back on. And they, I like that these pegs are actually long enough that they're gonna stay secure on there, and you won't have to worry about them actually accidentally falling off. So that is really good, and they just pour it right back on in like ooh, like so, kind of. I have to force that one, or am I putting it on backwards? I'm putting it on backwards, that's why. Okay, so they go, they do pour it in nicely, so you know if it doesn't go in there nice and easy, it's because it's on the wrong side. But man, he looks really, really good. Let's check out his accessories, then we'll look at his articulation. Okay, so he comes with two of these um, assault rifles. They are the exact same, and they're a pretty generic um, sculpt, but it's done quite nicely. The only, my only thing is it's very thin and seems pretty small for what they are. Um, and, you know, I think that's unfortunate. They're the same. Both of them are the exact same. I just, again, think they're too small and too thin, but it's nice that we actually get them and they actually do look like realistic guns and not some space weird thing, which, um, you know, I know in the movie they actually stick to kind of movie accuracy for the most part in accessories for the movie, so those look pretty good. Here is the axe, and I like the way it looks. You can see how it's sculpted on there on the end blades. I like the way that looks. Some texture kind of throughout. So I really like this. One thing um, I kind of wish, and this is just a nitpick, um, in the movie it seemed very shiny and metallic. Not metallic, but shiny, almost like a um, like onyx or like a glass type. Um, it reminds me of like the dragon glass from Game of Thrones, if you guys watch that show. So I wish this was just a little bit shinier, but it does, the sculpt of it does look really good, so I am happy with it. It's not a super flimsy plastic, so it should hold up quite nicely. And then again, he has interchangeable hands. These are the ones that he comes with out of the package. These are the opening open hands, so he can actually use this to hold the axe. And then, you know, the other interchangeable ones are actual trigger fingers, so he can hold the gun. Okay. Let's look at his articulation. All right, so Scourge. He, Scourge can look all the way down, which is really good. He can look all the way up as well. There is, of course, full swivel there in his head. Tiny bit of neck pivot in there. Shoulders go out that high up. These shoulder pads do get in the way a little, a little bit. If you wanted, you could take them off. I'm sure get more range of motion, but then it's going to look weird. That's on both sides. You can get it. There's a little bit of give in there, as you could tell, but that's as high as up you're going to get it. There is a bicep swivel there. You get a double jointed elbow, which works out really well. I like that good bend there. There's a swivel at the wrist, and they hinge, and it's the same hinge on both hands. There's no ab crunch on this guy, but we get a diaphragm joint, so we get good pivot to the side that way. Good, great pivot to the side that way. Let me see if work that more so lots of good motion going back he can go back a little bit but then that sculpt really doesn't continue on um, but that's of course because of the type of armor that he has that it you know it wouldn't normally continue so it does look a little flat and weird as you can see there going forward he can go crunch forward that much so actually not a whole lot going forward there is no waist swivel on this guy so that's the, that's the type of motion that you're going to have to do to get them. I mean, you can twist that fully around, but none at the waist, which I don't mind. This skirt piece is a separate piece that's actually, 
you know, on top of the figure. So, I mean, it wouldn't have gotten in the way, but I don't, I don't necessarily mind it because we have that diaphragm joint. If we didn't have the diaphragm joint, then it would have been real um, unfortunate if there was no waist swivel. But anyway, legs go out that far apart. He can kick forward that much. Leg goes back, it doesn't really go back a whole lot there. There is an upper thigh cut there, a double jointed knee. Foot hinges down, foot hinges up, and then we do get a nice ankle pivot. So good range of motion, just the only thing lacking is really that waist swivel. But there he is, now let's take a look at Hella. Okay, here is a size comparison of Scourge next to Thor, and you can see that Scourge is a little bit on the small side, but I always thought that these movie Thor figures, or especially from Ragnarok, that Thor was actually a little oversized. So I think that's what's going on here. So unfortunately, they don't look too great together because Scourge should really be a much bulkier because of all that armor that he's wearing. So that's disappointing in that aspect, but the figure itself still looks really good. So it probably should be a little bit bigger. Thor should be a little bit smaller but I'm still happy with it there. So here he is next to Thor. Here he is next to Loki as well. And that actually, yeah, see, he should be much bigger than Loki of anybody. So, but he still looks really good. Okay, so here is Hela up close. Now, I, I would not have thought we would needed a new Hela figure, but now that we have it, we needed it because this one is a lot better. The head sculpts are just absolutely amazing. Forget the paint apps because there's really not a whole lot that's actually different, but these head sculpts are just so much better. Now, the unmasked head that she came with before was really good, and it still is, still holds up, but the he the, the head with the antlers just wasn't, wasn't very good. It wasn't really movie accurate either, so, you know, you look at this compared to to this, yay, 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 because I don't, I mean, she didn't have green paint on her face or anything, she didn't have green lipstick, but man, that, that looks good, now, they're the same exact antlers, but man, that's good, look at that, so looking at the rest of the figure, we get a nice metallic green this time, whereas on the previous version, it was just a dark green. So that's the big difference, or the only difference, really. So looking at the cape as well, it's a nice metallic green on both sides, and then up at the top where it holds in place is black, whereas on this, then we got a little bit of a different shade of green. It was just a very dull, dark green. So nice metallic green for the cape. The rest of the figure is the same. Again, it's just a metallic green. So the biggest unfortunate thing, though, is that she's still hard to stand. It took me forever just to get her to stand so we can take a close. And of course, of course, on video, on camera, it stands up right away. That's always how it works. But yeah, not a whole lot difference in the actual figure itself. You can see that the metallic green and then on her chest, they painted that dark green on the old one. It is all black um, on the new one. So this one, again, is more movie accurate. Now let's check out her accessories, and then we'll take a look at her um, articulation. Okay, so looking at the accessories for Hela. So one really cool thing is she comes with a little flame effect piece for the Eternal Flame. Now this looks to be the same effect piece that we've seen used over and over with like Scarlet Witch, but they were red. So this one is orange to show that it's fire. So that's a nice little touch. The highlight is probably gonna be more so the interchangeable hand with her holding Mjolnir. Now, this looks pretty good. The sculpt of it is nice. You can actually see a lot of the cracks of where, you know, she's starting to crush it. And the hand sculpted on there is nicely done and painted well. They even put fingernail polish on there. But the big thing is, is that this Mjolnir is teeny tiny. I don't have one here to show you, but it, just know that it is a lot smaller um, than the regular Mjolnir. Especially since we even got a new one with the Worthy Cap. So much, much smaller on there, but it does look really good. A lot of marbleization in that hammer, which is actually works out perfect for this accessory cinch. You know, she's smashing it and crushing it apart anyway. So it's not gonna function as anything else. Again, sculpt it on there. You're not gonna get that on there. If you do, it looks like it is glued on. If you do, it's not gonna look good. So I wouldn't recommend using it for anything, but nice little touch. Here we have the interchangeable heads, and you can see here, these are a couple of different looks that she actually has during the movie. So this first one, I'm getting some green paint chip 
from the figure. This first one is kind of how she looks when she first comes out of whatever prison that she was in. Um, and it's just the head sculpt and lots of hair on there. There's no wash or anything to it, it's just straight black. Uh, but that's the look, again, that she has when she, once she's released. It's the same look that she has when she's, you know, crushing Mjolnir. So that's a nice little touch. This is kind of the look that she has at, when she returns to Asgard as she, you know, she's starting to gain power. Um, things like that. So that is how she looks. So that actually looks really good. And I can really see Kate Blanchett um, in this head sculpt. I like the way they do it. They keep doing, like, the green veins kind of throughout her forehead a little bit. They did it on this one as well. The lipstick that applied that's applied looks good. Everything about these looks really good. Now here's one of the old ones um, f that came with the original release with the Gladiator Hulk uh, Build-A-Figure Wave and it still holds up. The skin tone is a little bit different. She looks more pale in these new ones which I would say is a little bit more accurate. Um, the cheekbones, you know, her face looks a little bit wider on the older one. But it still looked pretty good, and I think it still holds up. Um, not really sure, thinking back on the movie, at what point her hair was real wavy like this. Um, maybe that was, you know, concept art at the time, but still looks pretty good. There's a lot of dark shading around her eyes on this one, but I really like the way um, these new ones came out looking. Okay, so here is side by side with the new Hella and the old Hella. Now, the new one does look really good. The new head sculpt is awesome. You can actually see more of her face, which is actually screen accurate. They utilize the digital face print. She has an angry look to her. I, I, I really like it. It's a huge upgrade. Now, if you have this original version, I don't know that this new one is really going to be enough to, to get you to want to replace that one. Um, the added benefit is that you're getting Scourge, so you know it's a nice character to add. The figure itself is really good. Um, th the other thing to note is the metallic green on the new one really helps and pops and, and gets the figure to stand out. It just pops, whereas the dark green just it looks kind of dull compared to this one. Now, if you have this one just on your shelf, she still looks good. Um, so, you know, it's going to be up to you on if you really want to replace it. If you don't have Hella, get this two pack because this one alone was going up for $70. Now, obviously, the value is really going to dip because, you know, this one's going to become available. Um, so, if you wanted this one, I'm sure you'll be able to get it much cheaper here coming up pretty soon. But this new one is awesome. Metallic green really stands out and looks good. So, we're going to take a look at the articulation on her. So, I'm going to keep this head on. So, this is going to this head's going to give you the best range of motion. She's not going to be able to look up um, with the other head sculpts because the hair is going to get in the way. Now that I'm looking at it, man, that head sits way high on that neck. Looking at that, wow. Anyway, she can look up a little bit, but surprisingly enough that this the way the cape looks right there, that's going to hinder the articulation of her head going back and looking up. So, um, you know, with the long hair, it wasn't going to work anyway. So even on this one, it's hard. But she can look down. That's not a problem. But man, looking at that, that is crazy. Look how high up that head is on that neck. That's interesting. I'm trying to think of the old one. The old one actually sat really high as well huh I don't think I noticed that back when I reviewed that figure before a anyway so shoulders are kind of tricky you can get them to work up but you have to work and just pop that cape off it just ports on at the back so you have to it, the, the shoulders shaped very weird so to get it you have to kind of work it inside that shoulder joint to really get that arm to go up. But once you do, you can get the arm to go up all the way. You can get a full rotation in there as well. Single jointed elbow with the swivel at the elbow and you're only gonna get 90 degree bend, that's it. Not a whole lot there. Wrists swivel and they do hinge, same hinge um, on both sides. Actually, this open hand is a swing, a roll of the dice motion there. There's no ab crunch because a typical female figure, we get a diaphragm swivel, so not a huge range of motion, but she goes to the side that much, goes to the other side that much, which isn't a huge amount. Forward, very, very little, and it's kind of oddly sculpted here in the back of the figure. Going back, you have to work it around that weird spot, and she only goes back so much. So in terms of articulation on this diaphragm joint, it's pretty lacking even from a female figure standpoint. Legs go out that those that far apart. She can't kick up that high. Back, she's not really going to move back. There is an upper thigh cut there. You get a double jointed knee, which works out really well. 
no boot swivel or anything like that, but foot hinges all the way down, hinges up barely, and then we do get a nice ankle pivot there. So decent articulation. Um, she was pretty badass in the movie and will move around uh, quite a bit. Unfortunately, this figure isn't going to be able to do that uh, for you. Okay, before we look at all the figures from Thor Ragnarok, I wanted to show a close-up of her head sculpt, the different head sculpts. So, again, this one is when she returns to Asgard, um, and I think it looks really good. Okay, here's the head sculpt of when she's first released from her prison, and I think that looks really good. And the figure actually really looks good without the cape, so I'm probably going to display her with this head sculpt. Maybe with this one, because these ones, these two came out really good. I really like the way they look, but, you know, probably this one, and then she'll have, you know, the, the Mjolnir holding. It's like she's busting it. So, looks really good. Now let's take a look at all the Thor Ragnarok figures. Now we have so many. Okay, so here are all the Thor Ragnarok figures together. <clears throat> it's pretty crazy that initially when we started, we had a Thor figure, a Loki figure, Hela, and then Gladiator Hulk. And that was decent enough to get four figures from a Thor movie, whereas Dark World didn't get any figures at all. The first Thor movie, we only got Thor. Um, Avengers, we had one. So it was pretty lacking in terms of Thor figures. And then when Thor Ragnarok came out, skyrocketed. And now even more so because we get four more figures to add to it. So pretty cool. Korgon and Grandmaster are great. This new Hela is awesome. Scourge, I'm really happy with. Now all we need is a, is a Heimdall figure. Why can't we get Heimdall? We need him. We need him. We have a sword. The Bifrost sword. Nobody else uses it except him. Well, I guess Scourge technically does too, um, but we need a Heimdall figure. And then I would love to get a Valkyrie figure in the white uh, Valkyrie suit. That would be pretty awesome to get with that, whether it's for Endgame or anything like that. Definitely would love to add it to the collection. This Scourge is a nice addition to it. Hela is a great surprise to have a better version of the figure that we had previously. Um, so I'm happy to add it to my collection. So all look uh, all together, they look pretty amazing. I'm very happy with them. But I would like to know what you guys think of this two-pack. Are you guys going to be picking it up? Are you going to replace your Hela? Are you going to stick with the one that was released before? I'm curious. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, also ask away down in the comments as well. When will these show up? I don't know. No, GameStops are going to be receiving them very, very soon, as early as tomorrow, I believe. I think in some cases, some people have already found them at GameStop. So they're coming. They're hitting. When pre-orders or, uh, or when they'll be available from online retailers, I have no idea, but should be soon. Um, but there they are. So if you guys liked the video, please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, guys, thank you for watching.